there will be no distractions in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Father Lord, the teacher that you have brought to teach us, bless her and fill her with more wisdom, knowledge, and understanding in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you very much for that, Emmanuel. Thank you. Um, I really appreciate that. Um, guys, right, I'm just going to call names. So I would expect people that has not got their videos on, I'm going to be calling your name first. Does anyone know what the topic is for today? I'm sure her answer sent out today. You know, like the topics that we're going to be going through this year. So, I'm expecting at least, if not all of us, at least very few of us to know what the topic is for today. Does anyone know what the topic is for today? Right. Um, okay. Emmanuel, yeah, go on. The armor of God. The armor of God. The hammer of God. Okay. Since um you're going to start with us, what what is the what's the armor of God? Um, like the armor of God is like the Bible and like the Holy Spirit and like all the things that are connected with God. You put it on and like it protects you from like everything, like all the worldly diseases, all the all like like demons and stuff that like, protects you from everything and like it, like you, and like God will always like be with you and yeah. oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Can anyone else tell us about the hammer of God? I'm sure some of us have heard about the hammer of God in church or you've done a personal study on the hammer of God. What is the hammer of God? If I don't see any answer, I will quote names. So, Amor of God. Okay. Should I call name? Lesson. What do you understand by the Amor of God? Um, the Amor of God is like, um, like attrib attributes of um, Christianity of God. And that have been like displayed on like different like different parts of armor. Like there's the sword of the belt of truth, I think, and the sword of the spirit. So it's like because armor is used to protect. So um, if you put that in the context of God, yeah, it's using God's words and power to protect us. Yeah, that's right. I mean. Yeah, that's brilliant. Thank you very much. Thank you for that. Um. The, the the armor of God, I think the, the breakdown of the armor of God can be found in the book of Ephesians chapter 6 verses. Let's start from, uh, start from verse 11, but we will start from verse 10. Verse 10 to, let's say, um, let's end it above verse 15. So, someone is going to have to read for us. Sharon, can you please read for us? Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 to 15. Oh, no, wait, sorry. Let's go from verses 10 to 18. Okay, now. Has anyone else opened to that Bible verse? Sharon, we're waiting for you. I can't find your my Bible now. You can't find your Bible. All right. I have my Bible now, but I can't find um, Ephesians. Oh, right. Ephesians is in the New Testament. Right after Galatians, just before Philippians, towards the end of the Bible, towards the end. 
Anyone else there? Is anyone else there, please? That can read for us. Samuel, gone. Finally, my bedroom is strong in the Lord, and in the power of his might, put on the whole armor of God, that he may be able to stand against the wise of the devil. For we reason not against flesh and blood, but against the spirits, against the powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against the spiritual rulers of the darkness of the world, of this world, against the spiritual wickedness in high places. Verse 13. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God. That he may be able to withstand it the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins cut about the truth, and having all the breastplate of righteousness. Verse 15. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to point all the fairy that of the evil and take the element of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Verse 15. Good, good. Thank you very much. So when we talk about the hammer of God, when we talk about armor in general, if you're going into war, trust me, you will not be dressing the way you're dressing at this very moment. Has anyone of us seen a soldier before? Soldiers don't just, they don't wear, they don't just wear any clothes like us. If you've seen a soldier before or you've watched a movie and seen the way soldiers are, can I see your hand, please? Thank you. So, when a soldier dresses for a battle, they don't dress like we would on a normal day like this. They wear, they put on her armor. They put on, you know, their, you know, everything they need to put on. I don't want to go, I don't want to jump straight in. So they put on everything they need to put on for a battle. And does any one of you know that we being alive is a battle? Like they usually say, like life is a battle. The life that we live in is a battle. But did you see what the Bible said in that verse? Um, in verse 12. Verse 12, it says, for we wrestle not against the flesh and the blood. Why we are on earth, we're not going to be wrestling. It's not somebody did something to me. We are, we're, we're wrestling not against the flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and the rulers of darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places. If I may ask, by a show of hands, how many of us are children of God? If you're a child of God, let me see your hand. Okay. Um, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, because you said you're a child of God, there is battles every day. Battles that young people face. Can somebody tell me one of the battles that young people face today? What is one battle? Somebody, I want someone to tell me. Personally, if you look at your life, what sort of battle are you facing as a young person that is here in 2021, apart from COVID-19? Because trust me, we are all facing that battle of COVID-19. So tell me another battle that you're facing as a young person. Right, I'm going to call everyone. If I don't hear your voice, I will say that you're not interested in this class. And, you know, it's just, I don't know what I'm going to do. So don't let me think about what I'm going to do. So, because I like interactive class, what is what is one of the battles that you're facing as a young person? Shalom, can you tell me what's the, one of the battles you're facing as a young person? Because I know a lot of battles that young people are facing, so I, I know there are lots of battles that we are facing. It's not battle of somebody, my friend hates me, my friend Tade hates me. No, 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 that's not, that's not the kind of battle we're talking about. Shalom, go on. What sort of battle are you facing as a young person? I don't have any battles. You don't have any battles? Wow. Ah, okay. Okay. We'll come back to that. <laughs> we'll come back to that. Is our Auntie Joy wants to tell us? Oh, no, I'm just... Okay, you're just... Okay. Okay. 
Um, well, I, I can contribute anyway. So I take one of the batteries um, with face, you know, as a, you know, as um, as a young um, adult, would be the pre uh, peer pressure. You know, peer like, pressure. Yeah. Peer pressure is a battle. It's not, you know, somebody bullying someone. It's not just because that person wants to bully you. It's a battle. It's not about the physical thing. Yes, the physical is there. Don't get me wrong. But we're talking about the spiritual. And if you've heard anything, and trust me, I can say it. I work with young people, so I understand what this thing is. The spiritual controls the physical. Um, Miriam, I see your hand up. You want to tell me one of the battles that young people face? Uh, I was going to say peer pressure, but another one would be when um, it kind of links to peer pressure, but it's like when you have like bad friends and they encourage you by things like drinking or going out late or sneaking out, things like that. Yes, that's one of the battles. You might not think it's a battle, but it is a battle because you, you would have to choose between you obeying your parents, obeying the Lord. And obviously satisfying your friend. Damola, I can see your hand up. Can you tell me one of the battles that we face as young adults, young people? Yeah, well, there are this changing, like, in this generation, for us as young people, the earth is changing, you know, climate change, and how the earth is getting warmer, and the, um, the next generations are going to be affected so much by it, but it's already affecting us as well. Thank you. Yes, that's one of the battles that we have to face. Um, I don't know how to talk about that, but I'll leave it as one of the battles we have to face. The person on the galaxy, Samsung, I can see your hand up. What Can you tell me one of the battles we face as young people? You're muted. Ooh. Right. Mm. Right, okay, I can't get that. Precious, are you raising up your hand? Can you tell me one of the battles you're facing as young people? What procrastinating do you Say that again. What procrastinating? Procrastination. Yeah, procrastinating. Procrastination is a battle. It's a battle for young people. You don't see people that are older that they know they have to pay bills, they have to study because, you know, they have to make more money. You don't see them procrastinating. You know, procrastination is one of the battles that young people face. Laziness is also one of the battles that young people face. I'm telling you, we've all been through that stage. Every every other person has been through that stage that they were young and they were very lazy. It takes only the grace of God for you to be able to fight that battle of laziness. So these are battles that we face as young people. But how you know, with all these battles, bullying is also one of the battles that is faced by young people. You know, using, misusing social medias are one of the battles that is faced by young people. Dishonor, dishonor, you know, is one of the battles that young people face. One of the battles that young people face also is um, lack of respect. They don't respect elders like is, is one of the battles that young people face. If I list all these things and I ask you, you know, to take the ones that you know that personally in the last one week or two weeks, you've, you know, you've, you've been a victim of, I'm sure you'll be taking more than two. So these are the battles that young people face. But this battles is not a battle that we would only you know, deal with in the physical. We need to think about the spiritual aspects of them as well. That's why the Bible is saying to us that we wrestle not against the flesh and the blood. You know, like peer pressure is not your friend. It's about it's about the principalities, it's about the powers, you know, that want them. It's about the powers that affect the young people. There is a power that affects young people. There is a battle for young people in our generation. Does anyone know who are the pe two, two, I would say two entities or the two people that are fighting for young people in our generation? Does anyone know? Okay. There's a, there's a, there's a big, there's a big battle between God and the devil 
for the lives of young people. That's why the young people will go through any avenue. Um, the devil will go through any avenue to get the young people on his side. That's why the Bible says that the, the devil came to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So that is the battle for young people. You know, when, when the, when, when, um, when, um, when um, Prophet Joel was talking about young people, he was talking about them in Acts chapter 1, verses, um, I think it was verse 17, or Acts chapter 2, sorry. Acts chapter 2, verse 17, 16, 17. He was saying about in the last days that he will pour out his spirit. Can we open it? Can we open our Bible to that part? Because I think sometimes we need to understand that this battle, even though not physical, it is spiritual, but we are all part of it. We are all going to be, we are all going to be, we are all going to be part of the people that are going through this battle. Shalom, can you read for us Acts chapter 2 verse 17? Start from verse 16, please. Acts, the book of Acts chapter 2 verse 16. Yes, we can hear you. A sixteen. Yeah. Okay. But this is by sorry. But this is by which was spoken by the prophet Joel. Yeah, go on. You're going up to um at least um verse seventeen. And okay, I'll just start again. Yeah. Verse sixteen. But this is but this is by which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last day, save God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall see dreams. Thank you, Shalom. No. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. Thank you. So, guys, can you can you see what the Bible is saying here? It says the spirit, God cannot pour his spirit upon an unclean vessel. God cannot pour his spirit upon a dishonored vessel. And how do we dishonor and how do we become unclean? It is true, you know, going with what our friend says, not knowing our own purpose and not knowing what God has called us to do. These are part of the reasons why one become a dishonored vessel. And he's saying that he will pour out his spirit upon all flesh. You see that the young men is the young men that will see visions and the old men shall dream dreams. When you see, when you're dreaming, what are you doing? Guys, I need an answer. I need somebody to talk to me. I don't like a dog class, so I need someone to say something to me. When you're dreaming, what are you, what are you doing? Wisdom and, I don't know what the other name is. What's the other name on there? Wisdom and merits, I think. Is that it? Say that again. When I'm dreaming, I feel like it's in the real life. You feel like it's in the real life, but you're sleeping, you're lying down. So that's what the old men, the old men, like our daddies now, they will lie down, they will dream. If I tell you, okay, if I ask one of you now that if you and your dad get into a race or you and your mom get into a race, who's going to win? If you get into a race of running from maybe, you know, from one end of the streets to the other, who's going to win, guys? I need an answer, guys. Most, most likely the child. Most likely the child. So it's most likely it's going to be one of you that's going to, you know, that's going to win. It's not going to be your dad because they're old. They've been through that stage. They've been there. They've done that. They're on another stage entirely. So that's why God has given dreams to the men. To the old men, to the men, but the young one, he gives vision. And what when we talk about vision, we're talking about purpose, we're talking about passion, we're talking about you know taking the vision. If you if you say the book of Habakkuk chapter two, verses two, it says, Take the vision and run with it. 
So when you're taking a vision, you have the vision, you know how to execute all those visions, you have all the ideas and all the purpose, you know how to execute it. That's why he's giving young people vision. So this battle is for, is between God and Satan. Satan wants to get hold, you know, wants to get hold of, of, um, of, of, of the young person. Because he knows that it's only with a young person that he can change the course of a generation. He knows that with a young person, he can bring down kingdoms. He knows with a young person, he can do a lot of things. So I'm asking you today, who is going to win the battle over your life? Who is going to win that battle over your life? That's why we're studying this Ephesians chapter 6. And it says, it says, put the, the, the verse 10 says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his mind. And what does the book of that? Can anyone tell me what the book of Daniel chapter 11, verse 32, the second part of 32 says? It says, they that know their God shall be strong. How many of you know God? If I will ask that question, how many of you know God? Okay, I can say some hands. How many of you know God? Okay. So the Bible is saying to you that you know God. People that don't know God. I can see Miriam. I can see your face. Precious. I can't see your face. Blessing. I can't see your face. I can see that your videos are on, but I can't see your face. Okay. Thank you. I can see that. I can see the videos on now. So this verse is saying to us that when you know God, when you understand how God works, which is why you're joining, you're joining this um, this Bible club tonight, is to know God. Not everyone, somebody cannot tell you that they know everything about God. We know a little bit of dimensions of God. Each and every one of us knows a dimension of God. And with the dimensions of God that you know is how strong you can be. How do we know God, guys? It's a question and it's just one answer. And I know a lot of us know the answer. How do we know God? How do we know God? Can I see some answer? Give me an answer. How do you know God? By reading the Bible. Thank you, Shalom. By reading the Bible. You know God by reading the Bible. So if I can ask any of you today, when last did you pick up your Bible? Apart from that was so last Saturday was a class. Uh, if you pick up your Bible more than once this week, let me see your hand. More than once. Okay, 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 thank you. Guys that are not showing their video, you can put your emoji on, you know, I will say everything. Okay, let's put our hands down. If you study the Bible more than three times this week, this week that we're just ending from Saturday to this Saturday, more than three times. Can I see your hand up? Don't lie because this is the presence of God. There's no need to lie. You know, there are some, some weeks are good. Some weeks are not. So this might just be one of the weeks. Thank you guys. So thank you guys that raised up their hand. So the only way we can know, the only way we can know God, the only way we can fight this battle is by knowing the word of God. There's so many apps, there's so many things on, you know, there's the U version, you know, on the phone or on the laptop that you can download that can play the word of God to you, that can play the audio to you. It's very important that we know God at this stage of our life. It's very, very important. So, where, what, why do we need this armor? Why do we need the hammer of God? Can somebody tell me why we need the hammer of God? With the little that I've explained today, Shalom, not you. You, <laughs> I know you. You're trying to. You're trying to tell me that you're here with me. I like that, but no, I need someone else to tell me this time around. I need someone else to tell me why do we need the hammer of God? I need someone else to speak to me. Why do we need the hammer of God? Blessing, blessing. Go on, guys. You need to raise up your hand. I don't know how you would do that, but raise up your hand and then I will call you. Go on, blessed. Yeah. We need the armor of God to protect us um, from the spiritual battle that's going on between God and the devil. 
so that and the devil does not win over our lives. Thank you, thank you. Um, Inyolua, are you? Is there something that she wants to say as well? Yeah. Go on. So we need the armor of God to like protect us from all evil and to keep us like in a good relationship with God. Yes. Yes, yes. We need the hammer of God, you know, for protection, for guidance. When you're praying, when you're studying the word of God, there is a battle. How many times have you start studying the word of God and your phone start ringing? Like your friends start sending messages. Like that's when they remember that, you know, you're there. They start sending messages to you or start um, maybe ringing you to let you know about what's going on in school or let you know what one friend or the other did. So there's a lot of us, you know, there's a lot of battle for us. And before you know it, you've dropped your phone and you've started, like, you started picking up your call, like sending messages back on TikTok or Instagram or Snapchat, you know, just to just to be aware of the time. So it's very important that we know that we are not wrestling against flesh and blood. You're not wrestling against your friends that are calling you. You're not wrestling against the person that is bullying you. You're not wrestling against the person that's insulted you. But you're wrestling against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, and against spiritual wickedness in high places. And this is why we need the hammer of God. This is why we need the hammer of God. So, the hammer of God. Who is going to explain what the hammer of God is to me? Who is going to explain the Lord's grades with truth? So, Okay, I see, I see your hand up. Okay, Ola, go on. Tell me. Ola, go on, tell me. We don't have much time. Oh, I can't hear you. Okay, that's fine. That's all right. So, we have the hammer of God here. What I would like every one of us to do is to take each hammer of God each armor of God and to explain I want you to research find out what this armor of God stands for and give an example of how you can use that how it relates to you rather not how you can use that but how it relates to you for example let's go with the first one I'll give you one for example the breastplate of righteousness. The breastplate of righteousness. What does that mean? If they say someone is a righteous person, what does that mean? If I say someone is a righteous person, what does that mean? Excellent person. Go on, um, Shalom. Like an excellent person who knows the right answer. Like a... Someone who knows the right answer. That knows the right answer. Is that what you said? Right. Yeah? Um, Emanuela, go on. Someone who knows God like deeply. That knows God deeply. Okay. Samuel, go on. When, uh, when a person is the truth. Say that again, sorry. When a faithful person. A peaceful person. A faithful A faithful person. A faithful person. Thank you. A faithful person. And anyone else give me um, an answer? Oh, Sharon, go on. Um, someone who has like a connection with God. Okay, someone that has a right hand of God. Okay, okay, blessing. Someone that is wise. Someone that is wise. See, all these answers are valid. A righteous person is someone that do the right thing. They do the right thing. Even though the right thing might be difficult, but they do the right thing. And when you have on the breastplate of righteousness, it stands that when there is an attack coming, it won't, it won't, it won't, it won't affect you because you're a right person. I'm trying to remember a scripture in, um, I think is in, is in Matthew 5. One of the, I don't know if, if um, Auntie has treated um, the Beatitudes with you. I don't know. No. Has Ante treated no, the Beatitudes no, review? Long time ago. Long time, Le long time ago, ago, right. Okay. So, in in the Beatitude, in the verse, verses um, Matthew chapter 5, 
um, verses, um, I'm looking at it now, verses 6. It says, Blessed that they which do hunger and test righteousness, for they shall be filled. So when you're a righteous person, you're filled. Because you're doing the precepts, you're doing the law, you're doing the commandments of God. You're doing the, you know, I don't know if, um, I know, I don't know if um, Auntie has also treated the word of God with you. There's two types of, there's two types of word of God. There's the written word of God, which they call the logos, is the written word of God. And there is the rhema word of God, which is the word of God that God speaks directly to you. He spoke it directly to you. It was to you. He didn't tell anyone else. He told you. So that's the two types of word of God. So when we say the word of God, we're talking about, you know, you can talk about the word of God as in the Bible, which is the logos. And then the rhema is the word of God that is directly spoken to you. So in this Ephesians 6, it's saying that when you have this breastplate of righteousness, when you have um, the shield of faith, this is this is like it's like a armor. It's like um, I, I should have I should have got you a picture. When when you're going to war, you have to protect your chest. You have to protect your head. You have to you have to protect your hand because these are areas that if they fire a arrow, if they fire um, a gun, anything, it's easy for someone to bleed to death. If anything, if, you know, if someone is fighting and say they, they're fighting and they knife the other person, if it's close to the heart, that person will die. The chances of death is really high. No, no amount of um, first aid can help that person. So when you when you're using the hammer of God, when you're using the breastplate of righteousness, it will protect your heart. It protects your heart. The breastplate of righteousness, because you're, you're a righteous person, it protects your heart. So your heart is not affected. Does anyone know that through the heart, that's where all our emotions and all our wills, the will that you make, the decision that you make to be on this program tonight is because in your heart, you propose it in your heart. So it's very important when you're a righteous person. So I've given you one. I want you to go, Is that's your assignment, that each of this armor of God, write them out and what they mean, how they affect you as a young person, how they shield you from all the battles that, that's, um, that you might encounter as a young person. As a young person, when you when you wear the breastplate of righteousness daily and continually, you will see that a lot of things that people do, that they think they are having fun. They always say they're having fun, but you know it won't it won't really bother you because you know the kind of fun that God wants you to have. You'll be able to you'll be able to agree with God on what to do. And how to do it. And where you wear all this all this armor of God. When you wear all this armor of God. It would help you in your Christian journey. Like we, like Emmanuel told us when we started. About what the armor of God is. On your faith. Uh, do you want me to share the screen? Just to show that the picture. Yes ma. If you have, if you have it, yes ma. So that's it. That's it. Okay. All right. This is brilliant. This is this is brilliant. So that's it. Right, guys. Can you see that? Can you see my screen? Yes, Thanks. Okay. Right. See, this is this is what the scripture is saying. You see that helmet of right with salvation. A lot of us, we don't wear our helmet of salvation when we're going to war. Because we are in a battle daily. So we need to understand that the helmet of salvation needs to continually be on our head to protect us. 
The breastplate of righteousness needs to be there to protect our hearts. The belt of truth. You know, when you're a truthful person, you need that belt of truth daily. As a, as, a, as a person, you need that belt of truth to be able to keep you guided. These are the, when you say belt of truth, these are the principles and the values that you hold as a young person. The shield of faith, so that when your friends, when they say, oh, let's go steal something in Primark, let's steal this thing in super drugs. But you, you have the shield of faith. You're like, actually, I don't think so. You know, I don't think that's the right thing to do. That is your shield because you've shielded yourself, not only from embarrassment from your parents, but also for embarrassment for yourself. What if you steal something from Primark and they decided to put you on the news? It has happened to people before. They stole something and they put them on the news. You know, the embarrassment that is going to cost your family. But apart from that, the most important thing is the embarrassment is going to cost you as a person. So everyone will look at you and they will they will call you a thief. Yeah? So this, this has a sword of the spirit. Who can tell me what the sword of the spirit means? Who can tell me what the sword of the spirit is? Yeah, is to defeat all the enemies, but there is, you know, the sword of the spirits. There is, is the word of God. That's the sword of the spirits. Because when you have that sword of the spirit, when you know the word of God to go into battle, when you know your Psalm 91, when you know your Psalm 27, when you know your Psalm 35, it will be easy for you to go into battle. When you know your Daniel eleven thirty two, you won't be, you know, it wouldn't bother you when they say, Oh, young people are doing this. You're like, um, yeah, you know, I know my God. And he has said in his word that they that know the Lord, they shall be strong and they shall do great exploits. You know, you, you that's the sword of the spirit. That's what you actually need to fight the battle. This is what you need to fight the battle. To kick against bullies, to kick against pet pressure, to kick against um, harassment online, to kick against, you know, things that nail Jesus to the cross. is the word of God that you need, which is the sword of the spirit. So remember that another word for the sword of the spirit is the word of God, the Bible, you know, knowing your Bible, knowing, you know, what you need to know as a young person in the bible knowing what's in open as a bible and the shoes of the gospel of peace what does that mean when they say someone wears the shoe of the gospel of peace what 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 does that mean to you personally guys i'm gonna call one person shalom no shalom no shalom no don't tell me i don't want to hear it no someone else has to tell me Someone else that's not spoken today, if you've not said anything today, if I've not heard your beautiful voice today, tell me, tell me. I need to, I need to hear your Inyo beautiful Lua. voice. Inyo, yourself, no, Inyolua has actually spoken today. Ah, okay. Yes, Inyolua has spoken today. Um, Derek. Okay, Derek. Oh, Ifolua, Olami. Okay, okay, right, fine then, fine then. Shalom, can you tell us? What does it mean? Gospel of peace. Go on. I don't know what to actually mean, but I'm just going to say what I think. It's like walking, like walking on the right path, like walking on the path. What kind of? It's like you're walking on the, like on the right path of God. On the right path of God, yes, you know, that, that, that could be it as well. And when you, what does gospel means? Gospel means good news. When you bring, yeah, when, yeah, when you bring the word of God, the peace of God, when you bring the word of God, when you bring the good news of peace to people, and that's the good news of Jesus, and that's the good news of, and that's the good news of, um, of how Jesus came to save all of us. 
So on that note, Auntie has given us a perfect picture. Auntie, please, can you send us this maybe on our WhatsApp or okay. on our emails so that it's easy for the guys to, to you know, to talk about each of this um, breastplate. It's an opportunity for you to also, you know, study the Bible, you know. I'm sure you'll be able to give me, you know, I've mentioned about, I think, two or three scriptures, and I think they'll be relevant to every one of it tonight. So I would want all of us to close our eyes and pray that God have mercy on me in any way that, you know, I've gone against your will. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Let's open our mouth and pray that God, please have mercy on me. In any way I have wronged you, in any way I have made you too small in my eyes. The word of the Lord says that all are seen and come short of the glorious standard of the Lord. If you're going to wear the hammer of God in this end time, if you're going to be saved to be able to rapture with God at the end of this all, you will need the hammer of God because you cannot win the battle of life without the hammer of God. Let's open our mouth and pray. Let's open our mouth and just pray that God have mercy upon me. Forgive me of all my sin. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me, Lord. Have mercy upon me. I want to wear your hammer. I cannot do without you. I want to wear your hammer. I want to be able to, to, to be rapturable with you at the end of time. Lord, we pray that you have mercy upon us in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I can see that some of us are not praying, you know, is um this is this is a very this is a very lovely topic for us to treat as young people because a lot of time we don't know that we are fighting battles. We think that everybody is against us, but in reality it's only the devil that is against us. None of your siblings or your parents or anyone is against you, no. It's the devil that is against us and it will make us believe whatever he wants us to believe. But when we have the word of God, when we wear our hammer, is we're able, we're able to know who the real enemy is. So um, let me hand over to Auntie Joy. Auntie Joy will lead us in prayer, so we'll be able to go. Thank you, Ma. Let's start for Jesus. Let's start for Jesus. Let's start for Jesus. So. Um...